Zach. Welcome back to the Heroverse. And guys, this is Legacy Season 4, Episode 16, called I Wouldn't Be Standing Here If It Weren't For You. Guys, this is the episode we've all been waiting for. Uh, the big showdown between, you know, with, you know, Ken showing up, the, 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 the main god. And this was pretty much the, the battle I was, like, hoping for. Like, this was the big main event between, like, Hope and uh, the god Ken. Andy, I'm going to let you take over first on what you liked about this episode because we did see Landon in this episode. I know you like the character a lot. But there there was good parts about this episode, but there was also bullshit parts about this episode. And I cannot wait to get into them. And it involves Ben, a lot of the bullshit crap. So I'm going to let Andy go first on what you liked about this episode. What did you like about this episode, Andy? Well, I did see Landon. Yeah. And I love that character. I also was very happy with the war because, like, in the last week's end of, like, the last episode we saw, I yeah. just was like, I'm not for it. What was that? What was it again? I know, I know, um, oh, you mean him shaving? Yeah. I know you didn't like him shaving, I know. But I'm just happy that we... we Cause it just brought back, like, him... But, he, but he's already growing have... facial hair again, but literally. Like, it didn't last very long. Just, it's just like it's bringing, it just brought back him being that vampire hunter that wanted to kill but him. it didn't it's kind of, I, 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 but it wasn't because they symbolized that you know he missed being that person of the you know what I mean always like he turned his his past self that he was ashamed of into something pure into something good into like somebody that wasn't gonna drink themselves away you know what I mean was gonna actually you know T turn his past into something good. Yeah, I understand the meaning. But it was no, like he was reborn, essentially. He's not going to be Daisy Bourbon. Like, it's not like he's not going to stop drinking bourbon. He's, like, he's, I think I think he is because he because he kind of like got rid of it. If I was correct, saying I wouldn't need this anymore. So I don't know. I, he's he's really pulled himself together. He's back to that prime. You know. You know. Besides, you know, him with the cane and stuff, but he's back to that prime instinct of wanting to help people and you know and not trying to you know. Per, like, keep people safe in the way of keeping people out of it and keeping people in the dark. He's telling people now and he's trying to work with people now. He's changing. He's taking his newfound... Because he get, technically he was reborn because he wasn't dead, but he was in limbo. So now it's kind of like he's he got reborn and he wants to be... He's not taking his life for granted. So he's going to be that person that, you know, doesn't hide things from people, but asks people to help him. Ask people to help you know him with the solutions to, you know, to beat the, the villains and stuff. So I'm happy what they did there, but I'm also happy that Hope is back in this episode. She is, but she's still dealing with the prop, the with, with the bad version of, of herself, literally trying to get through to being to take over again. And we see that in this episode. Like, what did you think about that? Go with her a shit wreck. She did. Uh, you know, I because in this Sorry, and Lizzie, did, like Lizzie didn't have as bad, but Hope got her shit wreck. Yeah, which I was, I was really. So pro I, I really thought Hope would have gave more of a fight. Ken than... did to Hope what Hope did to Rick. Yeah, and what really what really annoyed me was is because I thought it was funny one when he dropped down on the ground and made his big entrance and then you know at this point the only ones at the school are is Lizzie, Hope, MG, yeah, I think it was also Ethan. Ethan. And I think Caleb and Rick might have been there, but also because I don't know where Cleo was. Cleo was in the woods trying to follow Jen because originally they, you know, Jen, they were hiding Jen in the school, but she thought, you know, her leaving would have helped the issue by, you know, cause I guess Ken is after, is only after, you know, Jen for her, you know, for her putting him in that, you know, in the coffin for all those years. So pretty much he wants his daughter back pretty, I thought the Punisher, which that didn't end up happening, at least that's what it seemed like. And I was like, okay, that makes no sense. Like I thought you would have tried killing her for her putting you in that, in that coffin. Um, I feel like maybe when he finds out, you know, why, when he finds out, like, you know what I mean? Because right now he probably thought, oh, you know, Malivore's dead and you know, it must have just happened. But I feel like maybe when he finds out that she's kept him in there the rest of all, and all the rest of the family members beyond Malivore's death, he'll actually want to kill her then. But, like, he just takes her and leaves. But when he first showed up, I really thought when Hope walked out with, you know, like, by herself with the sword, at least we think she walked out by herself, but the whole plan was, you know, Lizzie to pop out and try to siphon his, you know, powers, yeah. but that, that didn't go so well. So, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, but the, the, it was cool when, Hope, when you know, when Hope, fly, you know, when, well, he flickered his eyes and it, like, I was like, oh, bro, he just went, ah, 
I was like, dang, bro. I was like, you just had like, you think that's cool? And then Hope said, nah, let me turn on my, you know, what was it, like her wolf eyes and stuff? I was like, oh, I was like, let's go. It's that tribrid fight. Okay, let's go. I was like, I'm ready for this. But she didn't stand a chance. Like, she didn't get any hits on him. She, He just was throwing her around, kicking her, stepping on her, he punching the, her. He I was like, damn. He broke the fence, and he, like, threw Lizzie on her, and she, like, I thought she. I was like, oh, I said, Andy, did she just die? I was like, no, I was like, no, because it's like the stake that needs to like go through her heart. Like, okay, we're good. I got scared for a second. I was like, oh my god, he just yeeted her into that. I I really thought that Hope would stand more of a chance because we've seen people be like people be afraid of her, and just the fact that you know, and also like let's not act like being a tribe tribe bird is no is no small thing to like you know to, to look at here like no like the, a, a tribrid is what like a once in a lifetime thing and it's this all-powerful creature which we had these the remember that witch and that you know werewolf and that in that vampire group that was wanting to go and take down hope because how much of a threat she was to uh to their kind and stuff so well, i was like when no when they had black when they had black josie was it like dark, dark josie i i think remember it was like that group that was trying to hunt down hope and stuff because you know she's a threat to them to the into werewolves witches and vampires so that's why they were going to try to take her out so it's like let's not act like she's not a threat so i was like okay she should stand somewhat of a chance and get some hits on ken but it's like the writers like really nerfed her in this fight which because she didn't get any hits on him i thought that was bullshit i was like really the writers make it sound like oh my god you know she's this big powerful creature that everybody like was scared of at first and out of nowhere he, wait, wait, she just got her wait. ass kicked was was his name uh, Wendy? I think so. It was that big. Remember, it was that big thing where you know she was you know she was evil. She was evil hope at this point, and she was trying to go after those people that were trying to hunt her. She thought she would hunt them before they could hunt her. Oh, uh, so yeah. So it's like it was that organization. I forget what organization it was. That was in Dark Josie. Josie was gone. Yeah, then. but I think Dark Josie tried to like undo her, didn't she? No. Yeah, it was yeah. Cause no, Josie, didn't she turn dark at one point trying to undo? What hope hope turned out for a humanity at one point, but it didn't work. No, because Kelly, Kelly. I could have swore that was gone by then. Who? Her name's Kaylee. Katie. Kaylee. She wasn't gone by then. She was. Her actual her actual name is Kaylee. Yeah. No, she was there at the time because I remember because she had she's had it off for a while her humanity from the beginning of the season off for a while and 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 um, well, I, I can't believe I'm forgetting. Josie was here at the time and tried undoing you know tried standing up against hope, but it didn't work. It just didn't work. She thought her powers would be strong enough, but they weren't strong enough and, like, it didn't work. So that's why I'm thinking, because remember, you know, at this time, she's trying to go after that organization that's trying to take her out because she's a big threat to the witch, werewolf, and vampire, you know, you know, they're, they're, they're you know, they're kind now. She's, she's a big threat because, you know, this is a once-in-a-lifetime situation where this happens and, you know, and, and you know, they knew that she was going to be a big threat. So I was like, okay, so like, why didn't she, if you're building up like how, how strong she is and how much, how special she is, how did she get her ass kicked and not stand a chance against Ken? I understand he's a god, but in a way she's kind of a god herself. You know what I mean? Kind of. So I just found that very weird because it's like she didn't it, stand I any it, chance. I think if she still had her dark side... She I don't even that. think so. I don't even think so. Because she was strong and she could take out. But the thing you need to realize is that they, because they explained that you know when when Hope was in her bad state, she didn't have time to think things through. The she's not as strong as Hope because Hope is strong with her strategizing and how to fight people. That's what makes Hope so strong too. Is the strategizing and how how knowledgeable she is about magic. Remember when. Bad Hope went, went whatever. She was not good with magic like that because she didn't... Because remember, Bad Hope didn't like... Because all the... Good Hope knew all the magic and stuff, but Bad Hope didn't. Remember that was a problem at one point where she's like, oh, I don't know because, you know, I'm new to this or whatever because, you know, I'm I yeah. whatever. At least I think that... I, I think I remember that maybe. But that's why I was like, okay, so like that's why Hope, Hope is so special is because she's so good at strategizing. So even if Bad Hope was taking, like, was taking control and tried to fight Ken... Bad Hope would have lost way, probably way more than Hope because Hope actually had a plan with Lizzie, but it didn't follow through. So it's like, I don't know. I just, I felt like they should have gave her some, some more attacking scenes that actually looked like she was standing a chance. I just felt like they nerfed her so much because we see how powerful Hope is. Like it's nothing, you know, little to look at. Like you, they writ have written her to be this powerful once in a lifetime, you know, you know, 
being and it just she got her butt kicked by Ken. I just thought that was stupid. I felt like they kind of downplayed this whole big battle that was supposed to happen. And like, yeah, but what else did you think though? Because I'm like, I'm talking about what I didn't like, but I know you liked a couple of other things about this episode, especially you liked the Ben stuff. I hated that, which I can't wait to get into. I love him. But what did you think about his plan in this? It made no logical sense. That just like, that's the only time I did I never liked Ben. Because his plan made no sense. Him wanting to burn down Mystic Falls to get his, to get Ken's attention. And also to spare people at the school. To take but all, like, people, his... Okay, so... If you guys don't know, the Sasha School is outside of Mystic Falls. Yeah. That, that helped. They've always... Like, Stefan Damon's always lives outside of Mystic Falls. Yeah. Always. And, you know, their house is not the school. Yeah. But... Like, Elena's from Mystic Falls. And Matt. And Jeremy. Yeah. And Tyler. And Caroline. And Bonnie. They're all from Mystic Falls. His so, logic made no sense, though. So they were to come back, they couldn't come back because Mr. Falls was, was burned. Well, not even only that. It's like, because we, we, we clearly specify, because, you know, Rick is, like, telling, all, like, to MG and Caleb all to go down, go in town, because they just got done evacuating the school, but go in town, because Jed's actually staying, it was stayed back with Cleo and everybody trying to evacuate the school, but Caleb and MG went in town to, to, uh, what was it, to... And Ethan. Uh, yeah, to what, what I, I forget the word for it to blank people's memories. I, I'm having compel. A, compel people to get everybody to leave town to go to a vacation spot or whatever until everything was dealt with. But what I hated is the moment where, like, Kate, you know, you know, uh, you know MG's going to go uh, get the rest of the people, or I guess or go back to the school, make sure everybody's gone, and you know, or look around just to make sure they got everybody. And Caleb's standing there, and we end up having Clo Cleo's vision. Where it's like, you know, because Cleo ends up writing back at the school with Jed, ends up writing up, making a picture because she can predict the future, um, ends up making a picture of, uh, at least of what I thought it was, I thought it was Ken and I thought it was Cleo, but it turns out, which was, a, it was a bad depiction of Caleb because that picture did not look like Caleb, and apparently that, that, the person is supposed to be Ben, and I, and, and have, and Ben was supposed to have Caleb's head in his hand, and right when it happened, I was like, oh my god, that's Cleo's picture, what? That's fine. And when I, when I saw it, like, I was like, oh my god, that's Cleo's picture. I thought it was actually Cleo there, and it was actually Ken there, but actually it's Cleo's pic picture depicting of that's Ben, and that's Caleb. I was like, okay. And it turns out, you know, his plan was this entire time, which they didn't really make, and it still made no sense, because at first I was like, why are you doing this, burning down Mystic Falls? Because he said, oh, it's all a part of my plan or whatever. Um, because, you know, I, I forget what he, what he said, because, you know, he's like, oh, I'm trying to, you know, get, get my, my father's attention. And he's like, it doesn't make any sense. Your plan's invalid because we got everybody out of here already. So you can burn down the school all you want. We're not going to step down and stop your father from trying to, you know, take Jen and trying to destroy, and trying take, to destroy town. Yeah, like, we're not letting and it happen. And then take out people. Because Ben's plan made no sense. It's like so you that, helping them would have made more sense than you burning down the... But, yeah, but Ken still got Jen exactly. no matter what because she's like... If you want someone, take me. And that made no sense to me. It's like you you thinking you burning down Mystic Falls is protecting everybody else, trying to get your father's attention. Like, He's still going to go to the school where Jen is leave. and attack okay, your friends. They may leave Mystic Falls alone. That, that but that makes... I've been through so much crap they need to just leave the town. That makes no logical they sense to me the, because forget about the town in general. No, no one was even going to die, though, because he got... Because, again... Ben is not a good character because that made no logical sense. He's like, oh, I did this to protect you guys and get my father's attention. So that way, you know, he would, he would come here and not go there. It's like, no, dude, you can light all the fire you want. He's going to go after Jen. Jen's not with you. Jen is at the school with your friends. And you doing this is not going to prevent your friends from helping Jen and trying to stop your father. You make no logical sense, dude. And also him saying, oh, I did this to protect you guys. I did this to protect you, Jed. No, bro, you left Jed. To, to, at the, you jumped at the opportunity, so much as you love Jed, you let you jumped at the opportunity to bring back your loved one and to also try to get your curse by you releasing Ken, thinking he was going to grant you a wish. No, dude, he hated you. you. You can release him all you want. He's not going to give you that 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 you know that wish you want of your curse being off and you getting your loved one back. Which I still think, if I'm correct, and they might have changed this in the beginning, I could have swore that it was. It might have been his wife in the beginning, or it might have been his boyfriend. I don't know. I could have swore 
because I, I, I think if I'm remaining, I could have swore that it was his, it was his boyfriend at first. And I think they changed it when when he said in the recent episode saying, oh, I want to get back my wife. I don't know. They could have changed it. I would not be shocked if the writers did a whole change expecting we wouldn't notice. I don't know. But either way, he jumped at the opportunity to bring back his loved one and left Jed in the dust. So him saying at the end of this episode, oh, I love you, Jed. I did this all to protect you guys and protect you. He's like, no, if you wanted to, if you wanted to protect us, you wouldn't have betrayed us. You don't, you don't betray the ones you love. You would have fought with us. And I would have fought with you no matter what the outcome was. Ben is a crappy character. And, it, and I hate these writers expecting we would just love this character right off the bat. Love the relationship between Jed and Ben right off the bat. It should have had more of a buildup. And it should have, he should have fought with them, not went against them. And especially, like, if they really wanted to build up this relationship between Jed and Ben, he wouldn't jump at the fact of releasing a monster all for somebody that he loved, especially when he loves somebody else right now. That made no sense to me. So, I don't know. That, that makes no logical sense to me. His plan, so-called trying to protect them by burning down, burning down the town. What if there were civilians in town? Were you going to, like, let them leave? safely or were you just gonna burn the, the town down with the civilians ben is a terrible character i don't like that character and it's just it, it's the writer's fault i mean they really thought we would just like this character but he makes no logical sense especially how was he able to kick caleb's butt he is half god and i'm not gonna lie caleb is half you know you know half of what malivore gave him with his fire i was like dude this dude, especially because he showed no... Stop dragging. He, yeah, he showed no fight technique or any strength before Ben at all. Has anybody noticed that? He showed no skill at all of fighting really good at all. He's just been eaten and, and tormented by... by and just let, He's been eaten and been letting himself being tormented and be tortured by monsters. He has no showed any skill to throw around Caleb like that. I said Caleb liked this dude on fire. I was like, bro, take this dude out. He is clearly... All four not making any sense. Him, him, like he was about to burn down Mystic Falls with people in here. All to protect you guys. No. Get this dude out of here. It's they've only known this man for two weeks. Jed's only known him for two weeks. You know what I mean? And he and what really annoyed me about Jed in this episode is that once they found out, because you know, he, Caleb gets thrown to Ethan and um and the and the MG. And once, you know, once they, they found that, oh my god, you know, Ben is just about to, like, was about to burn down Mystic Falls and was about to, like, you know, he's, he's fighting, he's, and he almost killed Caleb, and mind you, at this point. But when Jed shows up, it's like, bro, you should have been turned on to want to beat this dude up and take him out, because he almost killed your friend one, and again, you've only known this dude for two weeks, you can like him as much as you want, whatever, but it all goes south when he's literally was not, he's working against you, and he's about to kill any of your friends. Hell, kill two more of your other friends, all for him wanting to protect you guys and make sure you guys wouldn't get in the way. When again, they're already in the way harboring Jen. So yeah. you make no sense, dude. It's like you, you, what, what, like you're, you claim to protect them and light this fire, but you're hurting them right now. He was trying to get Ken's attention. But that makes no sense because you can get Ken, you can't get Ken's attention because he doesn't care about you. He cares about Jen. He he said I'm coming. I'm here. You know what I'm here for. It was for Jen. So him leaving a fire makes no sense. He was gonna burn down Mystic Falls with people there to get Ken's attention when that's not what would have done it. And also, and claiming that he would get all the attention away from you know people at you know people at the school, but that's not the case. They would he would still went to the school, tried killing them for protecting Jen. So that moment when he's like, okay, I'm trying to keep you guys out of the way, get out of here. If they would have went back to the school, they still would have died. So you beating them up and then you trying to say them get out of there and you and you beating them up until they get out of there, you're sending them back to the school anyways to go fight Ken. So that's no that's no logic. Do you guys get what I'm trying to say? It makes no logic. This episode annoyed me, but it was good at the same time. Like there was elements, I love the elements between Lizzie. And hope, and I want to let you explain that because that was a really uh, beautiful I moment. I can't explain that because I don't understand it at all. Do you want to explain the, the Landon stuff and his mom? No. You don't want to explain the Landon and his mom? Really? That was beautiful too. Not really. All right. Well, you know. Okay. So, but so, but with Landon, and it, well, I, I'll I'll go with the Lizzie and Hope stuff well, first. Well, okay. Landon. You, you want to go there? Go. Yeah. Go. Landon's mom wanted forgiveness. She said, "I'm not forgiving you, at all." Like, he wasn't going to forgive her, but he was still... Because that wouldn't matter to get the coin back. He would still do things with her. Like, he went, they went to ice cream and stuff like that, and then she went off with that... Because he doesn't need to forgive that her. Hay, that haze-looking thing. 
the 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 ghost rider looking creature yeah yeah because the fu the, the angel fire. ghost rider riding looking creature because that's literally what he looks like no, it looks like Hades, because Hades here. Hades I get that, Yeah, you could take that too with Hades, but I love how it depicts that, like, he doesn't need to say sorry because he isn't mad at his mom. He knows that what his mom did was to protect him, and he knows that what his mom did made him to who he is and made him find love and made him, found a, made him find a family and made him go on amazing adventures. So he's happy. He's like, I'm not mad at you. You need to accept, you need to accept yourself that, you know, that you need to forgive yourself, essentially. I don't need and to forgive you. And he told her that she was a good mom. Exactly, and it gave her a coin. She she tried getting you know she tried getting as many coins as possible by like stealing them. It seems like, but it just never worked. But she finally got her coin for for giving herself, and she got to go to peace. I thought that was really beautiful. I was not expecting to see Landon's mom down there or find out that Landon's mom is the one that is scamming the genie down there and taking all the coins. You know what I mean? I, I forget what the coins were for. Like, taking all the coins for what people? Or just taking all the coins for herself to try to get out of there? I forget what it was for. Oh, trying to get out of there. But I, I love how, like, he is scamming the genie to Landon by helping people, you know, forgive themselves or get, or like, you know, or forgive one another so they can earn their coins so they can leave. I thought that was really cool. But also he, him helping people is what's giving him his coins so he can get out. At least I think that's what I thought, because he was about to give his whole earnings, all the coins he earned by helping people to his mother, which I thought was like, he really is okay with being here. He's okay. I was like, you know, I am really loving what they are doing right now. I was like, okay, I like how he's down here, kind of. I like how he wants to help people, and you know, and he found his calling, essentially, but I'm expecting he will get out, which I think I actually won't mind, especially because he's not the one that's going to be saving hope, at least, but, but then again, by the end of the way they end this episode... I don't know that he might be the one to save hope because it looks like he might get out in the next episode. Um, so who knows? I mean, I'm, I'm I'm very interested because hope ends up popping in at the end of this episode. Yeah. Which which I I guess she in a way is maybe in limbo in the in the brink of death. I don't know how she was able to get down there. I I really don't know. But she got to see Landon. And I, I I felt like you know that's great. I feel like you know this helps you know hope out a lot too. And it also helps Landon a lot too. I feel like there's un unsaid stuff there, and I'm happy that you know finally, she they both get to say the thing that they want to say to each other. And who knows, Landon might still stay down there. I don't know, but I feel like this is something they both really need, and I'm actually okay with them earning this moment of them finally seeing each other. I just don't know if she's at the brink of death. That's how she's in limbo. I feel like that's the only reason I hope someone does get to limbo, either if they die or if they're at the brink of death. So it seems like she you know is in in between because she got beat up really bad. So, I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what happens next week. Um, but also with Lizzie and Hope, about, you know, Hope is trying to get, you know, bad Hope out of there for, to stop her from taking over. And she has to find a way to get rid of her. And Lizzie comes up with the idea to turn something that, you know, turn your fear into something beautiful. Turn, like, so that something that you can let go and turn what, some, someone that you're afraid of into, like, which is your fear and turn it into something that you're not afraid of. And they turn it into like a butterfly. But of course she said insignia and she burned it just to make sure it, bad hope wouldn't come back. Um, which I feel like in a way that still makes no sense because like it's totally, I mean, I feel like that's that, in a way it makes no sense. It's a cool thing for what they're doing, but you could still turn off your humanity anytime you want to, regardless of if that version is gone or not. You could still like, that's not something you could just get rid of. It's just something you turn on and off. So I, I, I don't really understand that, but I do like what they were doing with that, like turning something that you're afraid of into, into a positivity, into something that you're not afraid of, into something beautiful, which I thought that was a really good scene between one another, especially because, you know, Lizzie told some really personal stuff to Hope, which I'll let you explain. You want to explain it? No. You're really tired, huh? I'm tired. Okay, well, I'm going to explain it. Um, So, yeah, like, uh, the, how, like, you know, Lizzie explained to Hope that, you know, I, you know, I, the reason that kind of, I pushed you away is because I didn't think you wanted to be friends with somebody so damaged and somebody that, you know, wasn't cool like you were and all that stuff. And that was really hard. Episodes. Yeah. That was really like beautiful to hear that because I, I never expected Lizzie would even like say that to Hope. And it seems like the more the seasons go, the more closer Hope and Lizzie get. And I'm really happy. It's like, you know, it's like, they've are we been, renewed for a new season? Yeah. We're, we're renewed for a season what? five because this is four yeah right? yeah we are renewed for season five yeah which doesn't surprise me i mean it's it, this season has been pretty good but
besides, I did not. I, I still don't know how I feel about this God, this God plot line because I'm. I just. It. I just. It just felt like it was you never earned because it, it never was mentioned before. And I've said that before. You guys know how I feel on that. It's just, I feel like, especially the way they ended this, where it's like he, I feel like he will try to kill, like, Jen at some point when he finds out that, oh, you've kept us in there way past Malivore dying. I think he'll want to kill her then. He just doesn't know. But I don't know. I don't know how I feel about also... There's a chance that Lizzie can still die because it looks like, you know, Aurora is still trying to talk to Ken to try to convince Ken to give her her wish. And as we all know, they're, they're going to still try going What's after her to bring her brother back. Oh. So, and, and as we all know, Lizzie is going to, of course, go after Aurora. But if she does that, they're going to break that bond that they made with each other. And Lizzie can die if, if Aurora feels like she's being betrayed. So I just hope that's not what happens. But it's a chance because like we, like, like we heard from Jen... Or not from Jen, but was it from Cleo? That two people will remember. die. I think it might have been from Cleo that two people will die in this scenario, which I do think one of them will be Lizzie, which would be a big shocker. I think that's a possibility. Or I think one of them was going to be Ethan. And you never know. It could, I, I, it's a big possibility the way they leave it off with Ethan, not like him flickering in and out of being solid and not solid and him like bleeding from the mouth. I don't know what that's, what that's about. I'm a little concerned about that. What's going on with Ethan? I don't want that character to die, but I feel like there's, that's a big possibility because two people will die in this scenario, clearly, from what Cleo said. But Cleo's been able to change the outcome of the future, so I don't know if she's still able to do that because apparently she's something different now, Jen said. She's more than than somebody that's able to tell the future now. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I really don't know where we're going to go with this, but I'm excited to see where this will end. And yeah, I just don't like the Ben character. I I just feel like th they wrote, wrote that character so bad, especially if they did change it where, you know, I, I don't remember. I think it was he had a boyfriend at first and then they changed it to his wife or they had a wife at first. And the, yeah, 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 yeah. If I'm correct. Yeah, they you know, had a boyfriend at first and then changed it to his wife. And I feel like that's the writers thinking we wouldn't pay attention. I don't know. I wouldn't put the past the writers because the writers, as we all know on the show, Sometimes you not. I feel like they don't know. Even on the CW, I feel like some of the writers you don't know what they're doing, um, because this Legacy isn't the only show that has, has been had crappy writing. Um, the only shows I haven't is All American and All American Homecoming, Star Girl, and Superman and Lois. Yeah, and that bums me out. That you know, I mean, I'll, yeah, just after a couple while in seasons. It seems like CW has a curse that after a while, with like, like a couple of seasons, writing starts to get really bad. I don't know what it is with the CW. Has, it's a curse. I think Flash has good writing. And you need to take that back. No. I will. I will walk. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know what I've been through with the Flash. I don't even want to speak about it. I don't want to talk about it. Flash went downhill after season three. You can't tell me otherwise. And there you don't know because you didn't watch it. You didn't watch it. Season nine. No. For season nine. And it's the last season, so haha. -ha, you don't know. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy. Because you don't know, and you don't know because you've not suffered what I've suffered I'll with the Flash. I know you will because you like Grant Gustin. I love Grant Gustin. He's a cool dude. But you the do. problem is, is that the writing is bad for his character. Grant Gustin's a great actor. You don't like her. I didn't, I didn't like him when he was uh, playing Sebastian Ingley. You know I didn't. He was mean. But besides the point. But I all Sebastian. I know is that I really, I, I, I hated this episode, but I enjoyed parts of this episode. And the main parts I hated, like I said, was the Ben parts. And I mentioned something else. And also, the way they wrote Hope being this powerful being, and she got her butt kicked. She at least should have stood somewhat of a chance, getting some good hits in, knocking him on his butt a little bit. I don't know. I just thought it was funny. He thought he was very threatening, flicker, like having a little flicker. And she said, it's go time. I really thought she was about to go in on this fool, but she got yeeted. And I was like, dang. I was like, they really downplayed Hope in this episode. I was like, they... The writers, man, I don't know what, what they're planning with this, but it did show his threat level that he couldn't be easily beaten, but she should have at least stood somewhat of a chance if they were going to build her up as this strong, you know, once-in-a-lifetime being. I was like, come on, bro. But yeah, guys, let me know down in the comments below what you guys thought about this episode. I want to know what you guys thought about this episode. Let me know, do you, do you guys, do you have any theories about where this could go? And let me know how you guys feel about how the way I'm feeling. Do you guys kind of agree with what I'm trying to say? Um, but yeah, um, other than that, again, if you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel, put those notifications, like this video. I'd love to have you guys here. I'm part of the fam, I'm part of the channel. We're all about spreading love, positivity, and motivation. And guys, literally, we're almost to 500 subscribers. Right now, we're at 4... 
91. We're literally almost to 500. Like we're right around the corner and I'm really trying to get there. That is my goal. That is my dream. I would love it guys if we could get there before my birthday. My birthday is literally next week and it's on a Sunday. It's May 8th. And, you know, I already have one treat with Dr. Strange being next week, but I would just love it, guys, you know, if, if, if I could get to 500 as a birthday present, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, guys, yet again, um, I'm excited to see what they do with next week's episode. I think it's going to be really good. Actually, next week. I want to tell you guys this right now. Since Dr. Strange is on Thursday, Legacies will be postponed to Friday because of Dr. Strange on Thursday. I won't be... Actually, that's... I might be uh, home. I, I might be home I because... Won't. Uh, if it's on Friday, I won't. I won't be. I might be home because I have work. Well, I might be home because Doctor Strange is only an hour and something. I don't think it's even two hours. And also, it starts at three thirty. I most likely will be home in time, depending on when I get out and also when I do my review for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So you guys will know if it's up Thursday, and and if not, it will be out Friday. Um, what time do you have work? Do you have work on Friday in the morning? What time do you get off? Mm, 3.30. What'd you do when you get back? You don't have work on the weekends, do you? I'll be too you? tired. We'll, we'll play it by ear. Because I think, you, I think you should do it, Annie. I think you should do it. Um, I, think I'm I think I'm 6 in the morning. No, it's... No. All right. Well, I will be here, of course, as you guys know. It's always up to Annie when she wants to be in the videos, as you guys know. Sometimes she's too tired to do it, which is understandable. She's working and stuff, but I do think she should. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, that was she the video. Be tired. I, but guys, that was the video. I hope everybody has a great day, a safe day, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.